So here's what you should know the basics about infertility. There are more options now for women and for couples, including same-sex couples, than ever before. There are many, many roads to becoming a parent. I think what's really new and exciting in the area of reproductive health right now is elective egg freezing, and it's really shifting a paradigm from one of infertility to fertility. This is something that a lot of women in their 20s are starting to think about electively freezing their eggs, and a couple of reasons for that. Number one, the science and technology is now well studied, well proven, it's safe, it's effective, and it's going more mainstream. That means the cost is coming down. Think of this like you buy an insurance policy. This is an insurance policy for your reproductive health. And it's not just for women who want to pursue a professional career or higher education. This is because there are unexpected and sometimes compromising circumstances that occur in people's lives. Women should know about it. They should also be talking to their healthcare provider about their fertility in a proactive way so that 10, 15, 20 years down the road, they're not dealing with infertility. You know, embryo adoption is an emerging trend just because so many couples have frozen embryos and let's say they've used two of them, they have two children and they don't want to use the remaining embryos, but they don't want to throw them away. So they're donating them uh, to infertility centers so that other couples can adopt these frozen embryos. Okay, the basics of IVF, you basically need to take a woman's eggs, retrieve them from her ovaries, then take a man's sperm, and then an embryologist will take a sperm and fertilize one egg in a lab setting. Once that embryo is created in a lab setting, we typically wait till it gets to a certain stage, you know, five to 10 day stage. It's examined under a microscope. Once the embryologist says this looks good, it's gingerly and delicately and sterilely placed inside the woman's uterus. And then we wait a couple of weeks to see um, with some hormonal support if it progresses and evolves into a normal viable pregnancy. The cost is a massive factor for couples. It could be anywhere from twelve to seventeen thousand dollars per cycle. And many, many women will need more than one cycle to result in a viable pregnancy. The good news is that most of the time IVF can be successful. It's just a matter of when, how long, how much. You know, donor egg and uterine surrogacy, thanks to some celebrities, you know, they've come public. I think the issue of donor egg as we talk about celebrities that everyone needs to know is that when we hear these cases of these 50-year-old celebrities who are having babies, Almost 100% of the time, they are getting pregnant with a donor egg. You can get pregnant at any age, um, but not with your own egg. Women can conceive using their partner's sperm, or they could pick sperm from a sperm bank, and donor egg, which comes from a woman you know, under the age of 30, and um, she can then carry that pregnancy. Uterine surrogacy is legal in some states in this country. It tends to be very expensive. What's nice about uterine surrogacy is that a lot of times the adoptive parents get to participate with the entire pregnancy. They get to attend the birth. They're really intimately involved um, with their surrogate. And again, a lot of legal hurdles that people have to go through here. Very, very important that everything is legally documented so there are no future issues down the road. But um, gestational surrogacy is, is a wonderful, wonderful gift for a lot of couples. I think it's very important whenever we talk about fertility and infertility uh, to include foster parenting and adoption as well. Biology is oftentimes the least of what makes someone a parent and that connection, that love, that passion um, for raising a child uh, can exist regardless of biology. There are so many options now for couples and it's really uh, an incredibly exciting time.